Welcome to Sapphire One. Today I'm demonstrating how to enter a client invoice. This is the second data entry item located on the receivables menu in the accounts mode of Sapphire One. If you haven't seen the Navigating Modes movie, you can access the accounts mode by selecting it from the drop down menu here on the left side of the screen. This activates the account menus, so I can now choose receivables from the toolbar. As with the majority of menus in Sapphire 1, the first items listed are data entry items. These are followed by the inquiry screens, posting, and then the reporting functions. The second data entry item in receivables is client invoice. And when I select it, a new client invoice data entry screen appears on my desktop. Predominantly, the data entry screens in accounts mode have been divided into four main areas. On the left, we have the transaction and destination areas, and to the right, there's the management review and standing transaction areas. The transaction area is where you enter the details that relate to this particular transaction. The first field in this area is client ID. This is where you enter the identification code associated with the client you want to invoice. By entering a client ID into this field, I let Sapphire One know which client this entry is to be linked to. See how the field is blue. Wherever there's a blue field in Sapphire One, it means you can use the at symbol on your keyboard to search your data file. So when I enter the at symbol and hit the return key on a Mac or the enter key on a PC, a pop-up list appears with a list of all my clients and from this I simply select the one I need. Now my invoice displays their ID as well as the client's name. The next field is order number. This is where you can enter the purchase order number provided to you by the client. If they haven't supplied you with one, you can leave this field blank. Directly below, we have invoice number. This number is automatically generated from within Sapphire One, but it can also be modified. Total is where we enter the amount for the invoice, and this time I'll enter $200. For date in, Sapphire One inserts the current date by default. You can change this if you like by entering another date directly into this field or by selecting the calendar button to the right and choosing a date from the pop-up. Under this is period. By default, Sapphire One enters the current period. However, within Sapphire One, you can have up to 30 active periods. To select an alternative, use the interval button to the right of the field. You can then choose which period you would like the payment to be processed in. I'm happy with the current period, so I'll leave it as is. Due date is where you enter the date that you would like the invoice paid by. Next we have our prompt payment discount fields. This is where you can offer a discount to encourage a client to pay before the invoice due date. Discount is where you enter the amount offered as a percentage, or by selecting this cash button, you can enter it as a cash amount and Sapphire One will convert it to a percentage for you. Next to this we have days. This is where you enter the number of days the client has to pay the invoice if they are to receive the discount. Sapphire One will automatically trigger the discount upon payment of the invoice. If the client pays within the specified number of days, the discount will be applied. Also, if a client regularly receives a prompt payment discount and the payment terms have been entered in the client's terms page, the prompt payment discount fields and due date will auto-fill when you enter their client ID. The final field in the transaction area is Memo. You can enter any relevant notes in this field, and by selecting this clock button, Sapphire One will timestamp and date the memo for you. Before I discuss the next area, I'll just take a moment to explain the paperclip. The paperclip displays how many electronic documents have been attached to this particular transaction. When I click on it, I'm presented with the document storage window for this data entry. From here, I can either open existing attachments or add or delete documents to or from the transaction. In this instance, I want to attach a copy of the client's order which they either email to me or I scan from the original. To do this, I simply select the plus button, navigate to the document and choose open. 
Now the document is permanently attached to my data entry, so I can view it any time I like. Print off a copy if ever I need to, and as a result, there's no need for me to file a paper copy. When I close the document storage window, you can see that the paper clip has turned green, and Sapphire 1 tells me there is one item attached to this data entry. Now let's take a look at the destination area. This is where you choose which general ledger accounts the transaction will be applied to. To add a line, select the plus button at the bottom of the screen. The first line of the destination area is now grey, and the account number, project and tax code fields are blue. Remember, whenever you see a blue field, it means you can use the at symbol to search your data file. When I enter the at symbol into the account field, and hit either the return key on a Mac or the enter key on a PC, I'm presented with a list of all my general ledger accounts. Now I simply select the account I want. This is great because it means I don't have to remember the numbers assigned to each individual account. I'll select the first sales account from the list and now my client invoice tells me that the item I've sold is an appliance. Let's say that the item costs $100. So I'll enter that figure into the net amount field. Next we have our tax fields. They are tax code. This automatically defaults to the code that has been set up in the general ledger for this particular account. I can change this if I like. And because the box is blue, I can also use the at symbol to display a list of all the tax codes set up in this database. Next we have tax percent, which is linked to tax code and then the amount of tax that will be applied to our sale. The last box is the total amount for this line. Next we have the project field. If you have a specific job project that you want to report on, you can also allocate the total or a percentage of the client invoice to that project. This means you can run profit and loss statements at the project level and once again, because the field is blue, it's searchable. I'll select the first project on the list and allocate 100% of this sale to it. I'll now add another item to the transaction. This time, instead of using the plus button, I'll use the keyboard shortcut, command forward slash on a Mac or control forward slash on a PC to bring up a new line. I now need to enter the general ledger account for this item. Last time, when I used just the at symbol, Sapphire 1 presented me with quite a long list. So rather than viewing the entire chart of accounts, and since I know that my sales accounts all start with the number 1, I'll enter the number 1 followed by the at symbol, and I now get a reduced list that displays only my sales accounts. This time I'll select the second account from the list, and again, I'll say the item costs $100. I've entered my items, and I now want to save my data entry. Notice how the green tick on the toolbar is greyed out. This means that Sapphire 1 won't let me save the transaction. The reason for this is it's out of balance. And if I look at the bottom of my screen, Sapphire 1 tells me that my data entry is $20 out of balance. So I either need to add $20 to the total I entered in the transaction area earlier, or I need to adjust the amounts of the items I've sold. Let's say the amount for each item was tax inclusive and the total amount of $200 is correct. Instead of entering the price in the amount field for each line, I enter it into the total field and let Sapphire 1 calculate the tax for me. Now my out of balance amount is zero, my green tick has become active, and when I select it, Sapphire 1 accepts and closes the transaction. Let's say that I've forgotten to add something to the transaction and I need to reopen it. From the receivables menu, I'll select Transaction Inquiry, which brings up a list of all my transactions. The transaction I just entered is here at the top. There are two ways to open a transaction in Sapphire 1. The first method is Look. To do this, I can either select the Look button here on the toolbar, or I simply double-click on the transaction itself. When the window opens, I'm able to look at the information, but I can't change anything. The second method is Modify. To do this, I either select the Modify button here on the toolbar, or I can use the keyboard shortcut Command-M on a Mac or Control-M on a PC. Now when the window opens, I'm able to make changes to the transaction. 
Sapphire One also allows you to customize the user preferences for each person who has access to your data file. So if you would prefer to double click to modify a transaction, you can. I need to modify my client invoice as I want to make this a standing transaction. This is the standing transactions area and it's where I can automate Sapphire One to reissue the same transaction periodically. By selecting the schedule dropdown, I'm provided with a list of standard timeframes such as monthly, fortnightly, weekly and so on. If none of these suit, there is also an other option which allows me to enter the exact number of days between each payment. I'll say this transaction needs to be repeated every 10 days. Sapphire One then asks me for a stop date for the periodic transaction, let's say November 30. Sapphire One will now produce a client invoice for $200 every 10 days until the 30th of November. And these transactions will appear in the transaction posting screen for my approval prior to posting. Another field which also advises users of the status of a transaction is the tag field located at the bottom of the screen. I can tag a transaction to let others know whether it can be posted yet or if there is a reason for it to be placed on hold. So far, we've looked at the transaction, destination and standing transaction areas. The final area of this data entry screen is the management review window or the management review tabs. These tabs provide an insight into the relationship between this transaction and the parts of the data file that it affects. The first tab is Client. This displays the client's details, such as address and contact numbers as well as the balance they owe. The Control tab tells you who entered the transaction, if any changes have been made to the transaction, whether it's been posted or bank reconciled and so forth. The Allocations tab displays details of any credit memo, client receipt or client journal that's applied to this transaction. However, as we have just created this invoice, there is nothing to display. The GL tab provides you with details of the general ledger accounts that this transaction is destined for. When a transaction has been linked to a particular project, you can view the details of that project in the Projects tab. If a transaction is linked to a particular client or vendor via their ID, the Transactions tab will display a list of their last 100 transactions or so. Sapphire One has also implemented a great time-saving feature here. If you select one of the transactions from this list and right-click with your mouse on a PC or control-click on a Mac, Sapphire One provides you with two additional methods of entering your data. The first method is Copy Transaction. If you choose this method, Sapphire One will copy all the details from the selected transaction into the current data entry screen including invoice or order numbers, period, line items and so forth. This method of data entry is handy if you need to reverse a transaction. Rather than entering the details again, you can simply replicate the original. The second data entry method is copy lines. When I choose this method, Sapphire One only copies the line items of the selected transaction. Copy lines is effective when a client is reordering previously bought items. Instead of entering the items in line by line, with this method you can copy all the items from the selected transaction into the new data entry screen. You can then delete any unwanted items, add any additional items, or simply update the amounts and adjust the total. The final tab is Error Code. This displays any areas of the transaction that did not validate within Sapphire One. So that finalizes our client invoice data entry screen. I hope this was helpful and thank you for watching.